ready, Boo? Oh it's finally time we face the greatest cinematic train wrecks ever made. In the darkest recesses of history lie the laziest, stupidest, most manipulative piles of dreck that have ever fouled the age of moving pictures. Some are so ugly, badly acted, cruel or stupid that they managed to scar the entire movie industry. And we're gonna check them out today. So let's check out the top 10 worst movies of all time. And as always, if you do like these movies, that's great. It's just my silly personal opinion. And I'm glad you can enjoy something that I can't. Anyway, whoa. Hey, Nostalgia Critic, how you doing? I was actually just checking out the worst movies of all time. Oh, come on, Strider. We all know that Garbage Pail Kids is the worst movie of all time. Yeah, Garbage Pail Kids is bad, but I actually think there are movies out there that are even worse. Prove it! Fine, I will. Number 10. Pledge This, starring Paris Hilton. Society can only tolerate so much in celebrity stupidity before they say, wait a minute, we just watched the most obnoxious pampered female celebrity on the planet produce a film about exploding toilets and collecting used condoms. What the hell is wrong with us? Paris Hilton produces and stars in this sad defecation on the face of all moving pictures that ever existed, giving us only the worst in elitism, vapid self-indulgence, and whatever passes for comedy in that small vacuous chamber barely holding her ears apart. If you could concentrate all the empty-headed vapidness of a spoiled sweet 16 rich girl into one movie, I think it would look something like this. Everyone is treated like a derogatory stereotype dreamt up by a 12-year-old Call of Duty troll. Indians, Mexicans, drag queens, homosexuals, even the overweight are derogatory. If you're not rich, then you're to be made fun of. The movie is packed with overly coarse sex jokes even by college movie standards and the kind of painful, self-absorbed entitlement that got Paris Hilton her reputation in the first place. As far as I'm concerned, she can have that tiny bastard. Pledge This made me deeply question the true value of money. Because if money makes me even closely related to this, I'll take my patchy jacket and cardboard box right now. However, and you will never hear me say this again, in defense of Paris Hilton, she had some major scumbag directors on staff, and she ended up boycotting her own premiere because they added nude scenes, which she was very angry about. I don't know what she was originally trying to tell us, but it rapidly became the concentrated evil of everything wrong with frat boy movies. And the ninth worst movie is The Star Wars Holiday Special. Many of us remember the powerful, epic moments of Luke first rescuing Leia and using the Force to destroy the Death Star in A New Hope. But then, our buddy George gave A New Hope a follow-up before Empire Strikes Back. A holiday special with so much sandbagging, painful corniness, just weird moments and plain nonsense that it makes the entire franchise worse just by existing. They wrote a fan fiction about a special Star Wars Wookiee Day. Let's call it Life Day. Life Day remains the most idiotic, brainless, corny title for a holiday I've ever heard. You just hear that title and you immediately know you're in for something so campy that it makes Brady Bunch look like a dark, sinister horror. And the movie is 98% sandbagging. If we're not watching the Wookiee cooking channel, bizarrely coloured mini dances, or Wookiee's alone time, we're watching pug fugly animations about Boba Fett. I am convinced that every single fan fiction for Star Wars ever written would be more interesting than this thing. George Lucas himself despises this special, and I quote him saying, If I had the time in a sledgehammer, I would track down every copy of this show and smash it. And the eighth worst movie is The Room. Oh shit, I did not hit her. I did not. For those who don't know, a very socially challenged alien man named Tommy Wiseau created, well, 
something. None of us are quite sure what he made, but it has him in it, doing stuff, and talking in perhaps the most hilariously socially inept imitations in the history of mankind. Lisa loves you too, as a person, as a human being. The Room is a cult classic, and rightfully so. This movie is so impressively awkward that it makes community theatre look like Citizen Kane. Very few people I know actually hate The Room because it's such an earnest piece of work. It does at heart feel like a poor me story about vilifying this poor girl Lisa, but it's so wonderfully awkward in delivering its message that despite being one of the worst movies ever made, it's also still really funny. Just trying to conceive the demented reality Tommy made this movie in. The true goal of the movie seems to be Tommy's strange attempts to convince us that he's a perfectly normal member of society with a banking job, a girlfriend, future career plans, and a drug-dealing orphan he looks after. Tommy just wants the world to think he's normal. But the problem is, is that no matter what humdrum activities Tommy throws at us, from buying flowers to playing football with his friends, you can't help but still see him as that shady midnight manager at Shell with a creepy leer in his eye. Tommy, it's okay to be you. We know you're a creepy alien, and that's the way we like you. You just keep making the most abysmal films our world has ever seen. And I'm sure we'll keep enjoying them. And the seventh worst movie is... Turkish Star Wars, aka The Man Who Saved the World. Two space cadets crash land on a desert planet, where an evil wizard seeks the ultimate power to take over the world. I tell you this plot summary I read because only the demented mind of the creator could possibly actually understand what's going on in this discombobulated mess of low production values, stolen footage, and Mardi Gras costumes. Directed by Setin Inang and starring Setin Inang, this movie uh, borrows footage from Star Wars and uh, borrows music from Raiders of the Lost Ark. It is a great mystery what this movie was actually meant to be about. I mean, it was this strange unknown mixture of stock footage, bad explosion effects, and cut-ins of the director punching rocks for some reason. It's like we're watching a movie that is literally broken. Like the DVD just couldn't handle its own existence anymore and exploded inside the DVD player, leaving a glitchy broken mess of footage ugly greens and fart-like sound effects. And for number six... Stupid dummy! You! Kiss this! Imagine if the most annoying internet personality in the world made a movie that celebrated all the high-pitched, head-banging, fury-inducing stupidity ever placed on YouTube. That's right, Fred made a movie. Because apparently a sitcom that scarred the reputation of an entire network wasn't enough. This film hurts me to watch because of this overwhelming obnoxious sense of me first American Idol narcissism that pervades every fibre of Fred's character. The plot seems to be that Fred is stalking a girl named Judy, who is clearly both blind and deaf to not pull out a shotgun on him the second she sees or hears him. And that's pretty much the whole plot, really. The problem is, is that Fred doesn't fit into any real category of hero, anti-hero, or even villain. The only persona Lucas Cruikshank played as Fred was annoying. There is no part of me that wants to see this character succeed. The best part of watching this movie remains seeing Fred smash his head into a wall. In fact, I made a remix of it. Fred is not a comedy. It's just this constant squeal of noise continually erupting from my speakers. If your entire audience wants the character dead by the end of the movie, then you know somewhere, your movie has failed. Fred the movie will break your eardrums, then your spirit. And the fifth worst movie is... Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. That's like the greatest title for a movie of all time. How could this possibly be a bad movie? But the acting... The acting is so painful, so indescribably awful. 
and just take one gander at these Martians. The Martian costumes look like they just waltzed into the kitchen and started sticking forks and spoons into their hats. Our green-headed twit here called King Martian kidnaps Santa Claus, so we can provide Christmas cheer to the aliens. Oh, come on. Really? Sentient life reaches planet Earth for the first time in 4.5 billion years, and they want to steal our Christmas cheer? What are those funny things sticking out of your head? Those are our antenna. No, they're not. Those are bent forks. The United Flipping Nations comes together to try and bring Santa Claus back from Mars. NASA organizes a rescue space mission in an attempt to rescue Santa, using only the finest in free stock footage to demonstrate this. How anyone legally sane in production could not find this the most absurd idea ever conceived baffles me. And the fourth worst movie is Adam Sandler's Jack and Jill. Remember those times we had the television off? When we couldn't see the disastrously bad train wreck of a film Adam Sandler unraveled on our screens? <laughs> yeah, those were good times. We've all seen bad from Adam Sandler before, but it takes a special kind of awful to be the worst movie Adam Sandler has ever done. And how did they accomplish this? They put Adam Sandler in drag. That's right, Sandler has a twin sister now. If you thought one Adam Sandler was bad, try two. A goofy, flatulent sister that represents every boorish, brainless, frat boy joke we despise in Adam Sandler films. All captured in one big, unholy flop. Every scene, every comfortable everyday human activity, from the dinner table to watching a basketball game, is destroyed by Drag Sandler. Basic human maturity and kind-heartedness is lost in Sandler's world, replaced by schoolboy yeah, fight mantras and life. random squealing. But wait, it gets better. Because we get a romance between Al Pacino and Drag Sandler. If Sandler wants to dress in drag in his free time, sure, whatever he enjoys. But did he have to turn his kinky hobby into one of the worst movies of all time? In fact, the creators were so terrified of being booed out of every cinema they set foot into, that they outright refused to show any advanced screenings of the film. I can't say I blame them. You take back what you said about Pagogo! However, there is one plus to this movie. We get to see Jill smashed in the face with a chair. And after seeing this movie, I can have that on repeat all day. Jack and Jill is formulaic, uncomfortable, and painfully void of any human grace whatsoever. And now onto the movies that fit into that special category of rotten. And the third worst movie is Cat in the Hat. Ah, Dr. Seuss, it has touched the lives and very morals of so many children. It shapes so many of us today. And it's done so through beautiful, unique illustrations packed with profound, universal messages. To take something so beautiful and to corrupt it into everything wrong about cinema, you really need a rotten movie with a rotten spirit to do that. This movie isn't just bad. It is a cash-grabbing dump on something timeless and beautiful. The shameless marketing, the ugly designs, the countless lazy decisions. To take the most well-known Dr. Seuss story in history and to botch it up this bad. Mike Myers' suit looks like reanimated roadkill, and he gives the constant facial expressions of an escaped mental patient about to roger a squirrel in the national park. All the revolting greens, all the misshapen creepy colours and objects, all the endlessly tasteless jokes. It is visually appalling, the jokes are all weak as water, and the performances seem to be physically hurting the actors. Cat in the Hat movie comes from a place of no forethought, no original ideas, and most of all, no consideration for the younger viewers watching. And the second worst movie of all time is Garbage Pale Kids. Ha! <laughs> Called it! Okay, okay, I mostly agree with you. It's very close to number one. 
I only think there's one worse movie than this. As Doug has said, this movie is an insult to cinema itself. It is easily among the most god-awful, poorly conceived, psychotic movies ever made. <laughs> And I'm glad we can both at least agree, it's certainly among the worst. The Garbage Pail Kids themselves look like pure, concentrated nightmare fuel. With hanging open mouths and mucus-like, vile, oily designs that make you lose all plans for ingesting food for the rest of the day, their fish monster faces just seem to rot off right in front of our eyes. And then you get to what these deformed horrors actually do. These revolting monsters might pull out human organs for lunch. They might draw a knife on the camera or try to bite people's toes off. They might steal and cause chaos to the neighborhood, all under the guise of being for kids. This movie was so ugly, so downright repulsive, mean-spirited, and rotten, that it was pulled from theaters almost immediately due to endless complaints by angry parents. The acting is at such a bottom rung level that you will likely feel unwell just watching the performances, gazing upon the colors, and everything these rotten creatures do. No child, no adult, no sentient creature understanding of the human condition should ever be subject to this slimy spit on all of cinema history. It is easily among the top two worst movies of all time. And before we get to number one, I'd like to give the usual quick dishonorable mentions. Kung Pao. I both liked and hated this movie. On one hand, it's filled with pee jokes, flatulence jokes, annoying voices, and tongue humor. On the other hand, it's meant to be stupid and just wants to poke some fun at old kung fu movies. It got recommended, but I don't think it's quite abysmal enough to be on this list. Troll 2. This movie is an obvious choice for the list with its abominable writing and cheesy effects, but it's technically in the horror genre, and I've excluded horror films from this list. Gem and the Holograms. No greater middle finger has ever been given to an entire generation of millennials. No part of this movie was not so revoltingly self-absorbed that it made me want to destroy every smartphone I saw. Manos, Hands of Fate. You know the best person to make a movie? A Texas fertilizer salesman. Our good friend Harold made this movie after he lost a bet with a screenwriter. And I think a blind, drunken hobo with a broken camera could have come up with a more enthralling movie. Transformers 4. God, I hate this movie. But at least it's kind of colorful some of the time when it's not trying to give you a seizure. Even if it's not the absolute worst, I despise the Transformers movies for what they've done to the movie industry as a whole. Biodome. One of the few performances that will make Adam Sandler's absolute worst performances seem as reserved as Gandhi. Understand, it is a perfectly natural reaction to want to punch the two main characters within 15 seconds of starting the movie. This means you are human and still have a sense of morality. Anyway, here we go. And without a doubt, the number one worst movie of all time is... Daddy, would you like some sausage? Daddy, would you like some sausages? Daddy, would you like some sausage? Sausages! Sausages! Freddy got... Fingered. First off, I'm sorry in advance. When humans first created moving pictures so long ago, did they ever conceive that such a detestable, empty, worthless nightmare could exist? In what part of any human's creative vision does this thing fit? Imagine a grotesque man who never grew up, who thrived on shows about breaking things on reality TV, and throwing fecal matter into people's faces. Now imagine if that attention-seeking brainless twit got $14 million for his own movie to write and star in. Welcome to the most immature, vile, ugly, grotesque movie ever conceived by man. Welcome to Freddy Got Fingered. This is not a comedy film, as it likes to claim. This is a horror film. As we watch this creature try to outgross himself, you will likely have some of the symptoms of horror. You will likely feel like vomiting, screaming. You will probably look on your screen in horror, terrified of what's going to happen next. This movie is like an inescapable night terror Freud was having during his creepier phase. Does it think it's being smart? 
there is some dark part of the recesses of our mind where we forget what is downright wrong and assume that these will never happen. Then Tom Green comes along, gutting a deer carcass and wearing it, swinging a newborn infant on an umbilical cord, playing with animal genitalia. See, most people in the population have that part of their brain that says subjects like paraplegics, child abuse and mental illnesses are subjects that need to be treated with care and respect. But some missing part of Tom Green's brain lets him think these subjects are to be mocked and used to disturb every viewer watching. Tom plays Gord, who tries to be a cartoonist apparently, but rapidly returns to being a slacker trying to outgross himself and upset his family. I cannot understand a world where this thing is funny. Where it's anything but a collection of the concentrated worst of humanity. At least Jack and Jill came from Sandler just attempting to make people laugh. In my opinion, this is the ultimate black hole of all cinema. The most brainless, revolting, disturbing, immoral, empty husk ever conceived by some mentally disturbed human. There is absolutely no doubt for me. In my opinion, Freddy Got Fingered is the absolute worst movie of all time. Whew. Sadly, there'll always be badly made cash-in movies, but there'll also always be creative movies that try to explore humour, people, life, and emotions. Why? In the end, I'll always remember the movies that changed the world or were just pleasant to watch, like Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, or The Wizard of Oz. As long as there are people, there will always be those sparks of insight or human warmth that change our world for the better or make us see the world in a new perspective. And I'm looking forward to finding more of them. Do you think I missed a particularly bad movie? Damn right I did. This list is so broad that you'd have to make a top 1000 list to even scratch the surface. But if you have a particularly bad movie you think I missed, feel free to leave it in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.